As we begin our series of tracking videos, we will be introducing the basics of tracking using a method we have always used when teaching new students on site about tracking. First, we will teach you the difference between cat and dog tracks, then how to tell the difference between domestic dog tracks and the tracks of wild canines, such as foxes, coyotes, and wolves. We will always start here because with the similar tracks and gates, an observer can quickly learn the critical thinking and problem-solving skills needed for all animal tracking. Once this is learned, we can then move on to the really fun and interesting parts of reading the tracks. In other words, being able to tell if it's male or female, carrying heavy antlers, pregnant, hungry, or even identifying individual animals amongst a group. So let's begin. Here we have two different tracks. One is a cat and one is a dog. Let's look closely at the differences between tracks to figure out which is the cat track. Notice number two is the only one showing claws in the track. Now notice that number one is about as wide as it is long, whereas track number two is longer than it is wide. Track number one has two humps or lobes on top of the heel pad and a triple lobe on the bottom of the heel pad. Track number two has only a single lobe on the top of the heel pad and does not have a triple lobe on the bottom. Track number one is the cat track. The reason that claws rarely show in a cat track is because they pull them in or retract them unless they're using them such as balance on a slippery surface or holding their prey. On the other hand, a dog cannot retract its claws, so they show in their tracks. Non-retractable claws developed in dogs this way to give extra traction when a canine is running down its prey. Let's look at one of the other differences now. Cat tracks tend to be about as wide as they are long. This shows a foot that is designed for stalking and stability. The pads on a cat's foot are sensitive so that a cat can feel obstacles while stalking without having to break its deadly locked on stair to check for quiet foot placement. Compare this to a canine track that is longer than it is wide and gives better traction by having a longer time of contact with the ground because canines typically chase down their prey. These are some of the most visible differences between a cat and a dog track and as you can see, they develop differently based on the very contrasting methods of hunting and survival. We hope that you enjoyed this first episode of Tracking, and that you will continue to join us in our next video, where we will teach you how to tell the difference between a domestic dog and a wild canine track. With the next skill, you will be able to tell if there is a fox, coyote, or even wolves in your area.